nerds, Lottie here. Everyone seemed to really like the last video, so I'm going to do it again. This is just going to be a freehand looking at stuff on the century, and I hope you enjoy it. So, I am sitting on the back of the century at the moment, where the engine decks would go, which is right here. We're going to be having a look down in the belly of the beast. So primarily we're going to be looking at the ox gen today, but I will also show quite a bit of the uh, main engine too while I'm down there. It's a good opportunity to do so because the air filters are not installed, so I'm small enough to crawl under there. So everything black here is pretty much the engine side of things. Um, all the silver stuff is our electrics and water. Um, we've got a breather here, we've got our distributor, coil, all of these ones are the water system for the oxygen. You will notice that it is plumbed directly into the main engine. So all of the water in uh, both of these tanks and the radiators all supply everything. So they don't run an independent water supply, they just siphon it off the main. The oil is separate as well, as we'll jump on down. So again, ordinarily, you wouldn't be able to do this because the fuel tank, <laughs> you'll have to bear with me, <laughs> crawling into here is quite tight even for me. There we go. So ordinarily the fuel tank is where I am at the moment. So that's one pad for it and I'm sitting on the other pad. In front of me is the pulley system for the oxygen. So you've got that one up there, this one here, and this one is the water pump for the oxygen. So again, we're still using the same water from the main engine, but it does have its own independent little pump. Now, to tension the belts on this, it's actually pretty nifty. Behind here is a spring, it's a big coil spring that goes around. These three bolts hold it in, and if I do this, you can see it come back. So as the engine turns over, this will compress the V tensioning our fan belt. So it's a pretty nifty little design. I quite like it compared to these monstrosities, which are evil. I'll probably do a video on them at some point, but they are the worst fan belts I've ever had the displeasure of fitting. They work well, but they're all awful, awful, awful things to put together. Uh, while we are here, we'll have a look at this bar here. It is the mounting for the uh, primary engine, but it is also the water rail. So water, this is hollow, water actually runs all the way through these. Um, this pipe goes under, you can just see it there, and it goes up into the radiators. Uh, it also plums up here into our header tank. Now the water pumps on the front of the main engine, or water pump I should say, which is just around here. It's the off-coloured one, that's the main water pump. It pulls all the water in through here and on the top, you can just see it. <laughs> oh, where are we? There we go, that one there, oh, that one there, feeds the oxygen, which we're looking at. Now crawling further under, we have this big red thing. This is our generator. So under, uh, when the main engine isn't running, this supplies all the power. So you can traverse the turret with it, or lights work, the batteries charge, basically everything that you want the tank to do while not moving, this does it. So these three, I'll crawl under more, these three cables allow you to do 
pretty much everything that you want. When the engine's running, they supply power back into the tank. And when you need to start the oxygen, this one in the middle, uh, this one here, it acts, uh, it turns the polarity, so it actually acts as the starter motor for the oxygen. Uh, this is a four-cylinder Morris, by the way. There are two different types from what I've seen. Could be more. Um, most of the Australian ones operate this this one that's above me now, but there is a slightly different. Still, it is Morris, um, but it is a slightly different one. This panel up here is where the starter motor would be found on a normal Morris engine. But again, as we are running... A generator there is no point and there's no space for one <laughs> anyway uh, if for whatever reason you need to drop the oil from it you have this pipe here so it actually plums into the rear kidney plate of the tank so you can actually do the oil without climbing under the engine like I am uh, another point I should mention I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for the fact that the air cleaner is also out, so the air cleaner sits above where my head is. Um, you will notice this pipe here, that is our fuel system. We've plumbed in a brand new electric pump because it's groovy, it's nice, we don't have to worry about any sort of nonsense going on, it's reliable. There's really nothing to it. This one up here is the original, so we haven't removed it. It does work, um, but the plumbing that we want to do, um, considering we're not running the uh, main fuel tanks, it's just easier for us to use this one, and it's far, far more reliable. If, for whatever reason, someone wanted to go back to original, they absolutely could with no issues. We haven't drilled any holes, we haven't done anything. So you can just yank that off and use the old one. No issue. Uh, more interesting stuff. While we are down here, we've got one of the magnetos for the main engine. Uh, pretty simple stuff. They have two of them. It's a 24 spark plug system. This runs all of the, off the top of my head, I believe it's the inlet Maggie, uh, inlet spark plugs. So each cylinder has two spark plugs. This one, uh, which is what we call the exhaust side magnetos, because they are under the exhaust. And then you have the inlet side, which are actually on the uh, V, the valley of the engine itself. Um, so this has a twin that goes on the other side. The magnetos are offset by about five degrees to give you a full burn. Um, and it also gives you much better power at higher revolutions. Um, down here, we've got a little blanking plate. That is where the mechanical fuel pump would normally sit for the main engine. We do still have them, they still do work, but we're gonna bypass them for now because it's, well, we're not back in the 50s where we've got proper uh, electric fuel pumps that do this a lot more simply. Uh, they're pretty good, the old mechanical ones, but because this tank isn't going to be doing large numbers of miles, we don't actually want to leave them sitting in there because once those diaphragms get wet and then dry out and then wet and then dry out, that's how you crack them and then you just pour fuel out of the side. So they can leak even if you do run the fuel uh, through them. So again, it's not a major drama. All you have to do is take those off put the new ones back in and you can do that from inside the tank itself. So this is what we call the kidney plate, that big hole in the side. Normally that's bolted up. That's the firewall and inside there is the crew compartment. So yeah, um, we just bypass it for now. But yeah, again, if someone wanted to run this full original, they absolutely could with all the stuff that we've got for it. Uh, we just don't see the point in it right this second. Um, yeah, that's about it for in here. Just having a look around. So you can get a nice... 
it's a very nice view. Uh, this is obviously the exhaust, or one of the exhausts for the main tank. We will be putting heat shielding uh, along this bit here because we do have a fan belt and the carburetor for the donkey is right over there. So we're going to put some sort of heat shielding across, but it's not going to be super duper major because it doesn't have to be. The only reason we don't have any heat shielding at the moment is because the original stuff is asbestos. And I'm still young and I don't like asbestos poisoning. So cool. Alright, I'm going to go jump in there and I will show you what it looks like from the other side. See you in a moment. And we're back inside. Here we go. So this is the other side of the generator. So this is the fan assembly. We can sort of focus in on that. So it's just a simple fan. This is a grate so you don't cut your fingers off. And there is a seal around here. So if you need to, you can simply undo this one. And move it. Take this one off, it helps. And you can simply lock that. behind here. <laughs> Good enough. So yeah, um, when you seal this one off, which you really shouldn't or shouldn't need to, and you block this one off, it basically just pulls hot air um, directly through the, uh, over the generator. So we just leave this one open for now. And this pulls in air, nice and nice cool air, so that our generator doesn't get too hot. Uh, you can see, I'll shine the light in through there. See some of the cool generator stuff. Bam. On this side, unfortunately the tarp is annoyingly in the way at the moment. Here we have some of the controls for the donkey. So this is our trick, and here's the throttle. Really cool thing actually that I like about the throttle. One, you can push it in and pull it out, and it's got little clicks. Or if you want to fine tune it, you can actually twist it. And that's how you can set your throttle pretty damn accurately. Uh, over here, let me jam the camera in there. This is our switch block. Um, these two buttons operate the magnetos for the main engine, so these test the magnetos. So you've got a left hand and a right hand magneto. If you press this one, it'll earth out the left hand magneto, and you listen for a change in the sound of the engine, and that's how you know the magnetos are working correctly. If you hear no change, uh, it probably means the magneto wasn't working in the first place, and then you would assume the left hand magneto needs looking at. Uh, or spark plugs or something. It's purely a tool. Once you figure out uh, what your uh, issue is, you need to solve it. Here's your right hand magneto. Over here, this is ignition for the donkey. So you flick that one over and then you press the start button, which is over here. And this gives you a readout of how much how you're putting back into the system, uh, and you've got the lights for the generator. So that's all on the back firewall. Um, as I was mentioning before, uh, there should be a kidney plate here, which we do have. It's this one next to me, and that makes sure uh, that ensures that the uh, engine remains uh, separate, air-wise. Air sorry from the drives compartment. That way it's not pulling air through here or pushing air. Down here we have the starter motor. It's actually one of my favorite starter motors <laughs> of all time because you can put a little um, spanner or ratchet on the top there and you can turn the engine over manually without actually having to pull on the fan belts or anything. So that's where I was before, down there with the pillow. 
that's the magneto we were looking at before and here's the water pump from the front uh on older centurions this was actually one of the pipes that plumbed into uh, the morris the little donkey engine so that's a telltale sign on how early or late your centurion actually is as far as I know, all Australian centurions, of which this is one of them, operate um, that style of donkey engine. So these are always blanked off. I've never actually worked on one where they weren't blanked off. But there's a little bit of trivia for you, I guess. Um, behind here is the uh, fuel pump and the TPs for the main fuel system. So again, we've hooked up our own separate supply and all of this can be removed for the purists if they really want to. We like making sure everything runs correctly. So we've even put a little gauge in here uh, for the oil. Uh, behind here is the fuel pump for the uh, donkey, the original fuel pump, and the plumbing for the, uh, the fuel system on the V12. So again, ordinarily what you would find is a big sort of um, chicken, uh, what do you call it? Like the wishing wishbone from a chicken sort of goes over here and it plumbs into the mechanical pump there and the one on the other side and goes up into the carburetors. So that's that pipe uh, right here, that one there. That's the main fuel system. Now down here, this is what you would ordinarily use to control which fuel tank we are running off, the main engine. So it would be the uh, left-hand tank, right-hand tank, or the rear tank behind it. Uh, we don't use this at the moment because we're only using one tank, so that's redundant. Yeah, another little bit of trivia for you. On the other side, this is um, the basket for the main gun. On the other side, that's all a bit behind here. That is the air filter for the donkey engine. So you can see the pipe plums into the back of the firewall and it goes that's that silver pipe up here. I'll try and get my finger in the camera. This one here. And it goes around and plums into the donkey up there. So there you have it. That's pretty much everything on the donkey side of it and a few other little interesting bits that you may find interesting. So, if you liked it, please hit like and subscribe. Leave a nice little friendly comment if you want more of this freehand nonsense that everyone seemed to like last time. By all means, let me know. Um, yeah, I could do this all day. <laughs> so, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.